Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith and today we're out here and this is where I have uh, three cylinders that I've already disassembled. I've already called up, ordered up the seals. I have all brand new seals, wipers, uh, guides, square rings, everything to put these three cylinders together. Basically we have two cylinders that are out of a bobcat or skid steer. Uh, this is the bucket uh, tilt and this is the, uh, the, the hoist or the, the boom. Um, arm on them. I'm not particular. I'm not a machine operator. I'm a uh, heavy equipment operator. Uh, this third cylinder is out of a wood splitter. <clears throat> now, uh, these are pretty well simple. Just clean them. Uh, just a little deeper. Make sure that they are going back clean. Put new seals in them and we're good to go. Uh, the, the wood splitter had uh, O-ring damage from welding the fitting on and uh, that kind of created a leak in a scenario after the fact there. Uh, these here are just kind of worn. This one lifting cylinder here, both of these really have got, they had a lot of filth in them, and somebody actually got a lot of debris inside this hydraulic system on this tractor. I don't know, something like go in the uh, hydraulic system, or if it was dirt or grit, and uh, even the piston and the backup or the, uh, the cylinder uh, in, seal cap uh, show matching scoring where grit actually when this came fully open and there's scoring that will be have to polish off and stuff like that now the main thing is I'm gonna come up here I think I can get this in here close enough and you can see how hammered and beat that area was and if you look straight in you can actually see that there's more meat on one side of this retainer than the other. Now this is where the wiper seal sits in and that lip is going to have to be completely rebuilt. So the first thing I'm doing is cleaning this up. We're going to go in and we're going to heliarch up this surface right here and then re-skim it. Um, we're not going to get too much into the rest of this and we're going to be able to reuse it. These have buttress threads. They're almost straight in on this face here and then angled in like this. Before we go into uh, work on the end cap for that hydraulic cylinder, I just wanted to point out and show you that I just received a new used lathe, and this will be the first lathe that will give me metric capabilities in the turning, uh, threading, and that kind of thing. Um, in turn, I'm going to give away my Sheldon. I'm going to set the Sheldon up with the three jaw, four jaw, dog plate, face plate, and a quick change tool set, and a drill chuck, and a live center, and a couple other things that go along with it. So it'll be pretty well all outfitted. What's the catch? I'm gonna be looking for a student, all right? So we're gonna be bringing that in the future there uh, shortly, because actually when this goes in, the other one goes out, and I'm gonna be looking for somebody pretty quick. All right, let's go on in and uh, start on that cap. All right, we already we got this semi cleaned up here and we'll, we'll probably be hand filing, getting rid of these burrs in here where it almost looks like BBs or something was stuck in there. So I don't really know if it was dirt or what that got in it completely trashed this out and all the pieces sliding in and out, scoring, we got scoring on the board, this and that. But we're going to go ahead and what we're doing here is we're just going to set it up. I want a real light skim cut on this OD because I'm going to put a weld bead around here, rebuild that lip, this angle on here because this is pretty well worn down in this dimension here. Um, and I'm going to leave this inside here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take the Heliarch and I have some 4643 rod I like. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to wash that in. And then we're going to go ahead and fill a build up there so that we close this diameter. So we can turn the diameter, come in and clean that groove in there for the lip seal. Now our seal book has got all the dimensions in there for that. So um, we're basically going to be coming in here and, and getting in there to the original material. Uh, most of the penetration is going to be all on this lip right here. Uh, we cleaned this all up so uh, and wire brushes, then sprayed it down with cleaner and blew it off with air. So 
all we're going to do is take a light skim cut on there and the rest of the skim cuts will be when we bring it back here to do the finish work but I just want to start with a round diameter. Then we're going to go set this up in a wall positioner so that we can move this thing around where it's real comfortable to sit there in Heliarch. And we're going to go in there and set it up and uh, put some weld on it. pretty well started cutting all the way around right there all right it's just a little holiday starting to show right here we're going to take another four or five that's first side all right that way our buildup is going to be uniform from that spot right there uh, basically we're going to let it barely overhang here so we'll be able to kiss off the flat on this side here have that diameter built up so we can reclaim that and this chamfer that's out here we'll get that back all the way around there's pipe wrench marks and all kinds of other unique tool tracks all over that thing and uh, we're gonna get rid of them and we may actually set this up and put two new spanner holes straight across from each other um, they still look like they could tension one more time but they don't they, they may not be able to loosen it off one more time because they're kind of rounded in the uh, removable uh, removal uh, position all right let's take it in let's go set it up for a while all right we're getting ready we got the ronsom uh, wall positioner set up here and i i got a couple blocks up here because i'm gonna i got my left foot controlling my rotation for my positioner my right foot's going to be controlling the tick I'm using 332 uh, tungsten here. I've got a ball on the end. I prefer to have it that way. Um, and I'm uh, probably ready to go here. Now, somebody the other day on um, the comments there watching uh, one of my little walling uh, on the uh, chicken uh, coop was asking why I don't use uh, Jody's uh, uh, um, tick fingers. I do. And they're sitting here. When I need them or I, I want to have them, I, I've got them here. And, and sometimes I actually wear two at a time. And sometimes when I'm propped up like this, it's not necessarily that I'm going to be touching this, but I'm going to have a lot of refractive heat. And I'm going to be holding it for quite a while while this thing turns real slow and I'm laying on my dimes, okay? And so I have them right here. And if I start getting a little warm, I'm going to do that. Uh, and uh, of course, I'm, uh, I'm still favoring the, uh, the Lincoln welding gloves here. They are uh, a little better uh, quality, I think, than, than uh, the ones I have been wearing. And not to say that there was any flies on those either. Uh, these, uh, these are just, I don't know, got the Cadillac feel, I guess. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, I was mentioning 4643 on the rod. This rod is developed where you got very little delusion of the base metal and then you're going to be creating a buildup. And this rod is designed so it doesn't affect the base metal as much but maintains the strength in your buildup to be comparable to the base metal. And that's what this rod is about. Um, so we're going to go around the outside first and then I'm going to tilt it up and, and then I'm going to come around on the inside there where I got to uh, wash in that lip that's broken, missing in some areas, chipped out, and there's probably a couple cracks in there as well. But I'm going to wash it in and create enough buildup to where I'll be able to reclaim that groove to support the new lip seal. All right.
Okay, I'm leading it a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and speed it up just a little bit. Okay, and it looks like I pretty well melted into that back side there. It should have a pretty good straight blend of that lip there. Now I'm going to go ahead and raise this up and we'll put something on the front side here. Alright, I think we're pretty well set now. That's looking, uh, looking pretty good. Take a little wire brush and we're going to kind of like hit this face, just kind of take a look at this area over here that's been hammered on a little bit. I think we're going to go another pass right underneath that bead that we just laid. right here. Okay. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go around on this inside here. And we're going to go ahead and lower this back down. So I can see right inside the lip here. Okay, and we're going to flip the direction here. There we go. Pretty good. Go 
know, we need to we need to add a little bit more, just a little bit. Better to be looking at it than looking for it. Now we got enough closing that diameter and we're washed off inside. We're going to go ahead and tilt it up and we're going to wash in on the front side here. jaw here and we put it in a couple different positions and tighten it down and we're happy with the run um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start shaping the build up here so that we have that inner lip for the wiper and face of our cylinder OD and a little chamfer just kind of reclaiming some of the OD of this thing from being hammered by rocks and all of that all right, and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to turn and we're going to get this diameter here um, first. was uh, the OD of the cylinder there so we can just be this is uh, 3785 or so we can take another 20 or so right on the 7.55 all right now let's go ahead and let's kiss the back side so we got it nice and square see if I can 
I'm not going to be able to get in with that tool. So what are we going to need to get in there? Um, I'm going to reach in there with my parting tool. But before we play with it as a little turning tool there, we're going to shorten up our throw on this so that it's not sticking out so far. This way here to be nice and stout. Uh, so it's not going to be flexing away from us. And there's only a very little there, so we're just going to be coming in. Uh, it is mounted straight, so the, the geometry and everything else is going to be fine on the tool bit. Um, and we're just going to we're just going to tiny, tiny cuts to whittle away on it. see back there. Okay, feels, uh, we got our fingernail here. And it feels like about 10 or so. We're going to set a zero on our uh, on our dial there. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to take like five. At a time here. And that five feels like it took about half of it. There's another four. That looks nice. Okay, we're going to leave it right there. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and extend our uh, parting tool back out where we normally have it. Uh, just because one, it sits on the shelf better when that blade's not past there. And our average parting depth seems to be in that area right there. Probably uh, 30 thousandths away there. We can go ahead and we can set at zero. Sometimes I like to do this, give yourself an idea. We can always come back to zero. Okay, bring this in till you touch there. And we are 38 thousandths there. So about 30 is where we were. Alright, so we'll take, uh, we're going to take 20 of it.
Looking good. There's no holidays or anything else in our walls. That's looking really good. The uh, 46, uh, 43 does turn um, just a little bit on the foggy side. But uh, polishes up to a gloss. Alright, let's give it another 10. Nice. All right. That's about as close as we can get to the original. Right there. Okay. Now let's go ahead and we're just going to break that little angle on there. Uh, just so it's not sharp. DMP. That just breaks that uh, sharp edge out here. The TNMPs are almost a 45, but not quite. All right, now we'll come in here with a high-speed pouring bar. And this will be to get that inside diameter. This inside diameter will be the same as uh, as those there uh, on the rod, and we're going to go double check on the rod diameter. Uh, 